Southeastern 14 is presented by Bet Online, which has been your tournament bracket headquarters all tournament season. A lot more in store for you in sports this year with Bet Online. MLB is here, NBA, NHL playoffs are around the corner. As always, Bet Online is the number one source for your spring and summer sports wagering. Head to Bet Online today. Stay updated on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, that is B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. Next up, Oklahoma football. I'm Chris Lee, joined by Chase Robinson at Southeastern 14. Oklahoma will make its long-awaited debut in the SEC. It's been an interesting progression because Oklahoma gets announced in the SEC, changes coaches. Brent Venables comes from Clemson. Oklahoma promptly goes 6-7 and seven the first year. The defense, uh, which he'd been the coordinator at Clemson, does not look good. One year later, Oklahoma goes 10-3, and three, and it was a quality 10-3, and three, and, and now steadies to enter the SEC with losing some key guys, including quarterback. Uh, but, boy, they, they've got some talent across the board that we'll get into in just a minute. And this is a program that has figured out how to win no matter who, no matter when. That 6-7 and seven season was the first losing season that Oklahoma had since 1998. I think that's the first thing. There's been a consistency in Norman, Oklahoma, that has been unmatched just about anywhere else in the country during that time. Yeah, and that's why they fit so well in the SEC, I think, is because of the the story and the tradition of Oklahoma football. And they're a winning team, and they're going to step into uh, the best league in college football in the SEC, and they're going to they're going to win some games, and they're going to be a competitor in this league and uh what Brent Venables has done so far is impressive uh the way he's turned it around um you know he he you, you got to give the guy you know some some time to work and he did that last year like you mentioned 10 and 3 they were 7 and 2 in conference play and uh and I really like the direction he has this program headed in and I think he's the perfect guy for this transition year of going into the SEC you're playing different competition Let's be honest, you're playing better competition than what you've been playing uh, in, in the Big 12. So I think this is a, a, a really, really exciting time. If you're an Oklahoma fan, uh, to, to be a, a part of the, the Sooner fan base there, with Brent Venables, you're heading into the best conference. You're going to learn a lot about the Oklahoma Sooners quickly uh, in SEC play. Their first SEC game will be against Tennessee, uh, which, which I'm really high on this year. So uh, that could be kind of a – a defining game for Oklahoma, their first SEC game against Tennessee. All right, big change for the Sooners at offensive coordinator. Jeff Levy is gone to become the head coach at Mississippi State. They bring in Seth Luttrell, who's coached a lot of college football, has been a power five position coach in a lot of places, was a head coach at North Texas. Got a lot of talent to work with. Now, does have a, a major vacancy at, at quarterback, but they're not lacking for talent there. We'll get to that in a moment. But what do you think looks different on offense uh, with Jeff Levy gone? Yeah, you know, and I thought Jeff Levy did a, a great job leading the offense. And, again, we saw what they were able to do last year. And, again, uh, year in and year out, it seems like Oklahoma just has star-studded quarterbacks. And, and uh, but, you know, you mentioned the experience uh, that, that he's bringing in. Uh, as the coordinator this year and and again when you got a guy like Brent Venables who is a defensive minded coach he has to find somebody who is a really good leader on offense and and can kind of take the reins on offense and I think he's found that and and uh, I'm excited to see what he can do again a lot of new pieces a lot of new faces working some guys in so it'll be really telling uh, I think uh, the beginning of the season kind of the steps they've taken from from last year to this year as far as offense with a new quarterback and, and some new guys. They've got some big additions, though. They've worked the portal as well and gotten some some big-time guys, especially at receivers. So uh, I like uh, the offensive coordinator hire, and I think, again, we'll see a, a good offense as we typically do with the Sooners. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see defensively how it looks because, again, they've, they've got a defense-oriented head coach, from, from Venables and his work at Clemson. And and he walks into the league that is just offense, offense, offense. Now he comes to a league 
that has gotten more progressive on offense than, than it was with, with what most listeners grew up with. And it started to put up some numbers too, but it won't be the Big 12. I'm curious as to whether maybe Oklahoma fits Brent Venables better uh, than the Big 12 just because defensive-oriented coaches usually butter their bread on that side of, of the ball first. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, and and I think um, I think they're a good fit to the SEC because of that. You know, I I think um, again, he's a great mind, great football coach. We saw what he was able to do in his time at Clemson, leading their defense. Uh, but I I think he fits college football. He's he's kind of an, an old school guy in the in the in the game of it, but he also understands the the new school approach to coaching college football. So, um, and I like him, and I like the direction he has Oklahoma going in, especially at this time. You got to be playing your best when he moved to the best, and I think Oklahoma is right now as they come into the SEC. The quarterback situation obviously is going to be the the talk of that offense uh, with Dylan Gabriel gone. Now they got Jackson Arnold, who was a I think the Gatorade Player of the Year his senior year in high school. Numbers last year, he threw for 563 yards, four touchdowns, three picks, fairly accurate, completed about 64% of his throws, but it's going to be different stepping in as the guy. I mean, they got they got guys all over the place coming back. Gavin Shawchuk, their leading rusher. Um, they got several guys who caught dozens of balls for them a year ago. The offensive lines where it's going to be interesting. They, they lose about 11,000 career snaps there, which is a crazy number. But they did bring in a couple of guys who've been Power Five starting right tackles before. They bring in a guy who was a utility reserve at, at Washington. Uh, going to be very interesting to see what it looks like on that side of the ball because on one hand, anytime you replace kind of a record-setting type quarterback uh, and, and a lot of linemen who played a lot of snaps together, you're like, oh, that's, that is a formula for disaster. Uh, but you look a little deeper with the talent there, and I'm not sure that's the case. Yeah, and just uh, watch some some clips from spring practice, listening to uh, coaches' press conference there uh, at spring practice. It seems that Jackson Arnold is very comfortable, and that's a word that's been described multiple times about him and and how he's performed at the spring. Is is he's just comfortable. And he's got some really good guys around him, and he's not one. He's just gonna he's gonna stay cool. He's gonna stay calm, and that's what the the coaching staff really likes about uh, Jackson Arnold, and uh, and him leading this offense is just the comfort that he provides. And and again, he's stepping into a big role. Dylan Gabriel did a great job last year, uh, but one thing that helps Arnold is he's got a really deep wide receiver room, and so yeah. That's going to help him a lot. Um, and they got a big time transfer, uh, Deion Burks, wide receiver. Uh, he'll be a huge addition to that room. He transferred in from Purdue, and uh, he looks to be maybe the top receiver for this Oklahoma team, uh, plus the, the guys that they already had around him. So I like Jackson Arnold. I think he's a good guy to go to in their situation, especially with the receivers uh, that they have around him. And I think it's, I, I think. And that's what they're working on this spring is kind of relationship between the the O line and the new quarterback and get everybody in sync. But from what I'm hearing, it's it's going pretty well for the Sooners right now. Yeah, they, they've got a ton of guys back that caught balls. They also get back Andrew Anthony, who who caught a lot of balls in a half season before he got hurt. Uh, so pl- plenty of weapons there. Again, t- to me, it's just the the cohesiveness of the offensive line. It, if they can manage that. And you know, not not get a quarterback killed in the meantime, or, or cause a loss of confidence. I think there's there's plenty in the supporting cast to indicate they're going to be good there. I think so. And and again, I I like the way they're trajecting and and the guys I've seen added to this roster. So, uh, you know, I, I, Oklahoma fans, I think there's a lot to be excited about your first year uh, in the Southeastern Conference. Defensively, they got a lot better a year ago. Um, Year three, they got Danny Stutzman, who's going to be one, probably one of the premier defenders in America. They got a lot of guys back. I think they got at least their top four tacklers back. Uh, got guys returning all over the place on that side of the ball. They got one of the more heralded recruiting classes on the defensive line that they've had in a while. And again, with a defensive-minded coach, you figure that year three in the system, 
is when it's going to start to pop even more. Feels like the outlook on that side of the ball is, is pretty good. And, of course, it's not that the SEC doesn't play good offense, but it's going to be different from, from what you see in, in the Big 12. It really will, and I really like this side of the ball for Oklahoma. And uh, you mentioned Brent Venables is the great offensive, or excuse me, the great defensive mind that he is, and he's got a great staff around him. Todd Bates has been on his staff coaching defensive line. They've uh, elevated him to co-defense coordinator. Uh, he played football at Alabama. Uh, he is he has coached uh, in high school. He's coached in, in college, and and has made his way to Oklahoma several years ago with Brent Venables. Um, and he has done a great job. But they've made a new addition. Uh, as their, their uh, linebackers coach as well as co-defensive coordinator. He is a young guy full of energy, and that's Zach Alley, uh, who they brought over from Jacksonville State, who I got to know covering uh, him at Jack State. He's 32 years old with a lot of energy, youngest uh, or was the youngest uh, defensive coordinator uh, the last couple of years in college football. He is a great defensive mind. He actually learned under Brent Venables when he was a GA at Clemson and got the uh, defensive coordinator job at Louisiana Monroe. When Rich Rodriguez came to Jacksonville State, he came with him and was the DC at uh, Jack State for the last two years. And then Brent Venables wanted him back and, and went out and, and, uh, and took him to no Norman, Oklahoma. But he is a great defensive mind. Again, he brings a lot of energy. Uh, he, he, he moves guys around a lot on defense. Uh, you'll see some, some cool things that he does. And, and again, he learned under Brent Venables. So they know each other. They know they use the same lingo. Um, you know, they've, uh, they, they understand each other. Uh, Zach Alley knows what Brent Venables probably wants, you know, without him even saying it, they, they're just kind of on that level. So I think that's going to be huge, uh, for, for Venables to have a guy running his defense that he knows that he trusts that he kind of formed into a DC, I think that's going to uh, go a long way for uh, for the Oklahoma defense this year. Yeah, I'm interested to see how this program handles the 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 transition to the SEC. Now, I, I think they'll be fine for the record, but there's going to be some stuff you don't see week in and week out in the Big Twelve. Now, the, the crowds are are big and they're they're pretty fired up, but it's it's probably not to the level you can see in the SEC. You also get this, last five games of their schedule this year. Well, and, and if you want to really go into October, that's when it really starts. Not, not that the games before that aren't tough. They got Tennessee and Auburn in September, uh, Auburn on the road. But, okay, this is a gauntlet, Chase. <laughs> October the 12th, Texas. October the 19th, South Carolina. October the 26th at Ole Miss. Then they get Maine on November the 2nd. Then at Missouri, November the 9th. Alabama on November the 23rd. Uh, at LSU on November the 30th. I think in, uh, in in college, this was known as the pledging period. Um, the, yeah, nobody did the Sooners any favors. I mean, that that is one, two, three, maybe five potential top ten teams. In a in a seven game stretch, that is bananas. Yeah, uh, welcome to the SEC. I mean, that's that's just that's what you get. I mean, it's it's going to be different. But again, I think they're ready for this. But it's going to be totally different. I mean, I I don't know if if Oklahoma's ready to go into Jordan Hare Stadium yet. I mean, that's going to be an atmosphere that um, you know unlike any other. And so I, I think that you know they'll learn right off the bat what SEC football means. Uh, to the folks here in uh, in the southeast, very quickly, but yeah, that's a gauntlet of a schedule. Um, but but I I do think they're ready for it. I think they're ready yeah. for for this style of competition. Uh, they've they've paid their dues and playing good teams in the Big Twelve. They're going to see good teams every single week, though. And I, that's what I'm excited to see about this Oklahoma team is 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 how do they take it getting hit on the chin every single week? And I, I yeah. think this is a team that's ready for it. Well, look, we, we've covered the SEC for a long time, and so Oklahoma fans watching us for the first time, we're not the people that are going to sit there and, and look at you and say, well, you know, welcome to the SEC where nobody can handle it. I, I look at Oklahoma, and I think most people did, and said, oh, my goodness. Um, if you're a fan of your favorite team, winning just got a lot tougher. But again, because of that consistency of track record. One, since they lost that losing season in 98, one losing season since then, that was two years ago. That was a six and seven season in a transition year. I mean, I, I think most everybody in our SEC footprint is looking at this and going, uh, 
this just makes this league even tougher. And I don't think they would be in the SEC if that wasn't the case. The SEC yeah. is the the best football conference, and you're going to add the best teams to that conference. And so uh, I think that's part of the reason Oklahoma is in this. It's a very tradition-rich conference, and Oklahoma is very tradition-rich themselves, and I think they're a great fit to the SEC.